Shalom, my friends. This is Impact to Impact Ministry. We have been given a mandate of God. God would have asked us to join with Him in sharing the message of hope. You see, the hope that God has given to us is in Christ Jesus. He offers peace eternally. And we, here at Impact to Impact Ministries, are helping other people to escape. We trust God that as you will join in our broadcast, that you will be blessed week after week, or whether it is that you meet us on the mission fields or simply on the streets, preaching this word of God. As we continue to declare hope reborn, Jesus Christ, indeed, hope to all nations. Welcome you to a broadcast, Impact to Impact. Trust that you will be blessed in Jesus' name. We're giving all sinners a brand new start. Impact to impart. We're sending the message. Indeed, God is good. He's wonderful. His grace is sufficient for us. Today, I want to take some time to share with you concerning very important topic as to how it is that we are able to work and cope and deal with what is happening with us in life. My message today, the battle is in the mind, but the victory is in the mouth. I want to share with you a couple of thoughts and encourage you. The battle is in the mind, but the victory is in the mouth. In the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1, verse 2, you can read the rest of it and just enjoy the word of God. But it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of God let me share with you today that there is a battle that is taking place the battle the war that is happening is happening in our members the mere fact that you are alive you have a body a spirit a soul it is the reality that we're facing and the truth is that every one of us are engaged in a battle every single day of your life there is a battle that is taking place but the battle as paul would have had this documented he said i want to beseech you brethren by the mercy of god to present your bodies present yourself because the war is not is not just outside it's not just by your neighbor it's, there is a war the war is something that is happening inside of you angers and rage and jealousies and malice and pride and the, the feel and the need to give up yes there is the battle of sickness every single day of your life you're battling with sickness be it cancer be it a cataract be it hypertension diabetes or some other rare chronic disease or some other thing that you're just battling with the woman in the bible with the issue of blood there are issues in life and pride is also one of those things that we're battling with because it's a real war but paul said i want to beseech you present your bodies and even as i share week after week concerning this love of god this grace of god this mercy of god even as paul 
Paul said, he said, I want you to present your body by the mercies of God. Hallelujah. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. It means that it will cost you something. Come on now. It's a sacrifice because it's going to cost you something. The battle is on. But you know most what Paul was saying? That this battle that goes on, it's in the mind. It is, it is real. But it's what is happening on the inside. What is happening on the inside is influencing the choices. What is happening on the, is in, on the inside is influencing where you go, what you do, where you establish yourself, or where it is that you exit from that space. That battle is inside of you. It's a raging battle. And, and many times you find yourself wanting to put the blame on others, on the, 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 the dog, it's the cat, it's the weather, it's the rain, it's the sun, it's the moon, it's the government, it's, it's, it's the church. And we placed all of our, our, our anxieties and what is happening, we try to throw it away from us. But the real battle is not on the external, it is inside of you. The battle is in the mind. And the word of God said, Paul said, I want you now not to be conformed to this world because the world standard he would have expressed in Romans chapter 8. And he spoke about the fruits and the working, the working of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. And he's expressed and he said, listen, this thing is a war. He said, even I myself, I testify that I long to do good, but there comes evil. I want to do what is right, but I find myself doing the wrong. I want to get it right. And, and every single the person that, that I know on planet Earth have this war raging within you and you want to be able to have the victory. Today you find yourself you're up. Tomorrow you find yourself you're down. Today you find yourself that you're in a loving, happy, wholesome relationship. Tomorrow you find yourself it's friction, it's confusion, it's quarreling, and it's fight. Ah, this war is raging on. And every person is, is affected by it, whether it be in your workplace, whether it be while you're studying, whether it is that you're a teacher, you're a lawyer, you're a doctor, whatever your profession is, you're, you're working on, the, on, a, on a truck, whatever you find yourself in life there is a battle taking place but I want to let you know the word of God today as he says Paul says I want you to know this key is to have your mind renewed be renewed in your mind don't be subjected to the world because the world wants you to retaliate Yes, the, what the enemy wants to do is to make you retaliate. They are provoking me, and so I retaliated. No, this person is saying this to me, and they, they made me angry, and I retaliated. But Paul is saying, I want you to bring your body under subjection to the will of God. And so the battle is in the mind, but in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21, it gives us the antidote to this thing, because Proverbs is saying life and death is in the power of the tongue. My God, come on now. Life and death, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21, to be precise. He says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. They that love life. If you want life, if you want happiness, if you want the victory, the victory, the victory is in the mouth. So if you love life, what you say is important. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The battle, Paul says, you have to renew your mind. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed, be changed by the renewing of your mind. But you can't have your battle won with just a renewed mind, but it also has to have a focused mouth. Come on now. You have to be able to say the right thing. And Jesus Christ came on earth. And he's given us the way. When he said, I am the way. And he often, when he walked with the disciples, he would have taught them, say what I say. You know, I remember the first time he committed a miracle. His mother would have said to the, 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 those, those, those that were attending, he said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Right? He wants you to understand that he 
there is a way and if it is that you follow this way you're going to tend to life you're going to tend to victory you're going to come to that place but how did jesus really went about his ministry how did he do this work he says what he had to say so he said i say what i hear the father say and he's saying to us today i want you to say what i see I want you to say what because the victory comes the battle is in the mind but the victory is in the mouth so oftentimes while jesus was here you find oftentimes he would ask people the question do you believe this do you believe why is he asking them this question because life and death is in the power of the tongue yes some of you you're watching this broadcast today you are where you are because of what you said Oh my goodness, you are in a place of death because of what you said. Ah, the devil push you. The devil make me do it. Oh, that person make me do it. That circumstance, but it's what you said. You said it. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. And what you say, it will tend to light or tend to death. What you say, what I say will tend to life or it will tend to to that i want you to hear me clearly today because this is what god is saying unto us you need to say what jesus says so he would have asked the question over and over do you believe this why was jesus asking the question do you believe that i'm able to do this do you believe and he, he repeated this over and over several times i can remember the account in matthew's gospel chapter 9 jesus christ was dealing with with some blind men two blind men yes verse verse the earlier verse in verse 27 when he was departed hence two blind men followed him crying saying thou son of david have mercy on us two blind men they were following him now it's quite interesting how come two blind men following him they are following his voice they are following the noise they are following what is happening and they are able to to go in the direction of the voice that they are hearing come on now god wants you to come in the direction of the voice you're hearing even now in your particular state in life even though you're blind or blinded whether it be physically blind you're emotionally blinded you're spiritually blinded whatever the blindness is you must firstly tend to what you're hearing because faith comes by hearing when you're hearing the blind men they were hearing this this miracle they're hearing the commercials they're hearing the message that was given by the messenger oh they were hearing life they were hearing hope they were hearing things that they're not able to see with their eyes and so they came they would have said follow jesus i mean two blind men following jesus christ they followed him and they crying saying oh thou son of david have mercy on us and when jesus when he was come into the house the blind men however it is they got themselves also into the house they came to him wherever he was they went they were just making themselves available come on now and some people need to understand that when jesus is in the house jesus is in the house get to the house come on now i'm saying even now at this time where life has been shaken up two years and many people are still lingering and wondering you're in a state of blindness a state of pain a state of all sorts of uh, challenges but you're not even self trying to get to the house i want to tell you today get to the house where jesus is and the word of god says when they came to jesus uh, hallelujah they they made inquiry of him and jesus said unto them believe ye that i am able to do this do you believe now i know that you followed me i know that you're interested i know you're making your request ah but do you believe and if you believe i want you to say that i believe come on now hallelujah they must say they said unto him that's what they said they said unto him the blind men said unto him yea lord we believe they had to participate not to be able to see the power of god but life and death is in the power 
of the tongue. If it is that you're only using your tongue for that, and so I know that your challenges are real, the challenges are real, the challenges are real, the challenges in your body, the challenges that is happening in your life, the challenges that are happening in your marriage, the challenges that are happening in your children, the challenges that are happening in your workplace, the challenges are real, the challenges about your finances, the challenges about your, your, your health issue that is declining. It's real and it's not fake. We're not talking about fake things, we're talking about real issues, but when well, it is that you're constantly able to confess the challenge. Oh, I vex. Oh, I, I'm so hurt. You hurt me. And you could confess all that is negative. Why it is that it's so hard for you to confess the positive. We are blind men. We are men that need help. We are blind men. We are blind men. And they don't come in. You know, I remember at the temple in the book of Acts, when they were there, the, the, the Peter and James were going up to the temple. And the word of God said that there was a blind man that was there. And he was begging arms. He was just comfortable with his blind state he just decided I'm going to live like this come on now that man decided I'm going to just work with this this is I can't change my situation this is what many people find themselves saying my situation can't change so I'm just going to cope with what it is some of you you'll find yourself you know you're in that situation because you said I have a financial issue and this person is helping to deal with the financial issue so I can't change my situation to come to Christ no, I can't come to him with this particular state. I can't come to him in this particular status. They found themselves, or oh, this man, this, this blind man in Acts uh, report, he found himself just standing there begging arms. Uh, and the, the apostle had to say to them, we ain't have no ability to just give you arms. Uh, silver and gold we don't have. But what do we have? We want to give you uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get up. Get up and walk. And so, even as we think about it, blindness, lameness, brokenness, hurt, and everything that we can find happening to our physical body, there is a war that is going on. Whether it is that you're going to stay in that place of defeat, whether you're going to stay in that place of doubt, whether you're going to be staying in that place of hurt, whether you're going to stay in that place of rejection, whether it is that you're going to stay in that place of brokenness, or it is that you will rise and say, say something with your mouth. Say something. Don't just talk about your defeat. Oh, I'm a poor person. I'm a weak. I'm a. I'm. I'm. My. My. Per this person is wicked towards me. And you say everything that is dead. Try speaking life. Do you believe you want a miracle? Do you want your miracle today? Answer the question. If the answer is yes, well, it's time for you to be able to identify with the miracle worker. If you want deliverance today, and your answer, I ask you the question, do you want to be free from your bondage today? And if your answer is yes, well, it's about time that you tap in to the one that is the deliverer. If your, your request from him is healing, ah, do you want to be healed today? Jesus Christ asks, do you want to be, to be well? Do you want to be whole? Do you want it? Do you want it? And he's asking the question today, do you want it? Do you want to be happy? Oh, you're complaining about all the unhappiness. You're complaining about the mistreatment. You're complaining about everything else. But do you want to be happy? Do you want your marriage to be happy? Do you want your home to be happy? Do you want your children to rise up and call you blessed? Do you want to feel comfortable? Do you want it? Or are you quite comfortable with your blindness, with your debt, with your brokenness? The word of God is saying there is a war that is happening. It's in your battle. It's in your mind. It's in your mind, but your deliverance, your victory comes with your mouth. You need to start speaking something differently over your dead circumstances. Jesus Christ came. Ah, the word of God says that Mary and Martha sent message to Jesus while he was doing his ministry and we're still in resurrection season according to just where things are but resurrection is every day all year come on now Mary and Martha had an issue their brother was dead and they sent to get Jesus he was very ill and they, they sent message say he just is very ill come on come Jesus come by Jesus and Jesus Christ was not able to go at that place at that time can I tell you even while I'm on that point that sometimes when it is that you have your cries and your struggle going on somebody else is 
going through a crying and struggle also. Come on now, while you think it's you alone in pain, while you think you alone in distress, while you think that the world, nobody cares, nobody concerned, they think, oh, it's just me alone. And you make some decision like it's just you alone. Oh, they sent for Jesus, but Jesus was ministering to others' needs too. He was ministering to others' needs. And the word of God said he tarried three more days doing all that he had to do. Knowing fully well that he is the resurrection and the life. There is nothing that is impossible for him to do. Can you find one thing that is impossible for Jesus to do? Can you find one thing? And if I tell you, find one thing and it's not a real thing. It's fabricated lies there is nothing that is impossible for him to do no not one thing is impossible so while they were there and they were they were they sent message oh jesus our brother is sick come come and tend to him come and and, and lay hands on him come and pray for him come and speak the word of life over him so that he can be well again he tarried and he died but not because he died means that it is done. Come on now. Not because he died means that it's done, but when Jesus Christ shows up on your scene, all deadness will again become life. Hallelujah, if you can only believe. And so Jesus Christ, in his converse with Martha, as he had that conversation, oh my goodness, he, 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 he shared with her that there is, a, there is more to this thing. Hallelujah, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus Christ stole her. She said, I know, I know about the resurrection and I know that he's going to be in heaven. I know that it's okay. But, ah, hallelujah, I want you to know uh, that we we are so hurt. Uh, we are so broken. If you were here, he would have been well again. We're not able to deal with him anymore. He's going to be in heaven and I'm happy for that. Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. If, if the person is dead, yet shall they live. Come on now. That's what he said in, in, in John's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 25. Hmm? I am the resurrection and life. He who, who he be, the, the, said John, John chapter 11, rather, and verse 11 and verse 25. He who believes in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. And then hear the words that Jesus Christ used. Do you believe this? If you believe it, say it. If you believe it, say it. Come on, if you believe it, say it. The disciples had a moment when, they, when they, they would have seen Jesus Christ come to the fig tree. And as he would have come to the fig tree to get some fruit from it, it didn't produce. And Jesus spoke to the fig tree, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And Jesus Christ said the word to the fig tree, you shall never be again. I said your days are numbered, it's over. And the fig tree withered and died. The disciples observed what was said the day before as they would have been passing the other day. The next day they were passing, they saw the fig tree die. And they pointed out to each other, look the fig tree that they, the master cursed. Wow, wow, this is unbelievable. He cursed it yesterday and he's dead today. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Not death and death, death and life. So they asked him the question, wow, how did this happen? So Jesus Christ said to them, if you believe and you say to a mountain be thou removed and cast into the sea it shall be done it's not just me you say what i say you believe that the father is with you he have given you i gave you authority whatsoever you bind is bound whatsoever you loose is loose if you declare it so it is so and i want you to be able to say what i say this is the message of Jesus Christ. The power is in your tongue to get the victory. And it's not just to come up with your own words. No, you're coming up with sure words because his words are called faithful and true. Meaning that it will come to pass. Every prophetic word spoken, once God put it in the mouth of a prophet and they said it, every detail must be come to pass and let me even as i get ready to close to tell you that life and death is in the power of your tongue and there is something that is called eternity and if you love life you would speak life the only way you're going to get life is receiving christ 
The only way you want to get life is to be able to believe Christ. Don't you dare believe in any other source. There is nothing else, no other power, no other name given among men whereby men is going to be saved. Do you believe this? Well, you open your mouth and say it because life and death is in the power of the town. The battle is in the mind. The victory is in the mouth. Say it. Jesus Christ wants you to say it. Say his name. Say his name. He said, whenever you come, and if you, in my name, say. Come on now. In my name, say. Say his name. Don't be afraid to call his name. Because what the devil wants you to do is to, in the name of death, say. In the name of defeat, say. The battle is in your mind. And you want to say the things. I just want to tell you my mind. I want to tell you everything that is in my mind. But he don't want, God won't, don't want a Paul in his, his liturgy. And Romans chapter 12 verse 1 or 2 that I shared. He said to us, be not conformed to the world. Be renewed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let your mind now be as Christ's mind. And let your mouth be able to say the things that Christ say. I want you today to begin to speak life in your situation. Call forth Christ's words in your circumstance. Stop speaking death over your home. Stop speaking death over your marriage. Stop speaking about all the disappointment. Start speaking about love. That like the first time you, you fell in love. Speak about the love again. Yo, oh, stop talking about the problem. Stop talking about the situation. Stop talking about so much of the circumstance. And no, Jesus is Christ not, is not asking you to pretend that you're not blind. He's not asking you to pretend you're not sick. He wants you to know that this is your reality. Yes, this body of yours is going through something, but the victory is in your mouth. So say something. Speak life. Do you believe this? Say it. Do you want this? Say it. Do you desire it? Say it. Would you like to have peace? Say it. Would you like to have joy? Say it. Would you like to be happy? Say it. Would you like to be whole? Say it. Would you like to be healed? Say it. Would you want to be delivered? Say it. Whatsoever it is that you believe in the name of Jesus Christ as you say it, it shall be done. I release his word unto you today. And even as we go, I want to tell you that the word of Jesus Christ is life. It tends to life. It tends to liberty. It tends to victory. The battle is in the mind. The victory is in the mouth. And the one that is victorious is the name Jesus. Try using his name today. Try calling his name. Try receiving him today in your heart, in your life. And you'll see that everything that is seemingly impossible is going to change. I want to thank you for joining us today. And even as we go, I want to bless you. I want to release the word. Father, you sent your word and you heal them. And your word declare blessings. Your blessings, your favor, your kindness, your goodness, your grace be upon every soul that have accessed you today. And oh God, I declare your healing, your miracle, your deliverance, your victory in every space. I declare your peace beyond all of our understanding, your peace that passes all understanding. Let it, oh God, calm that heart and comfort that mind all for your glory in Jesus name. I want to encourage you again. The battle is in the mind, but the victory is in the mouth. Say what Jesus Christ says. Believe, say it. If you believe it, say it. I want to thank you for joining us. Remember, Impact to Impact Ministries, Corner Plymouth Road Union Connector, we want to invite you to come join us. I want to just greet the brethren in Guyana. Yes, indeed, I have not been to Guyana for a while, but I'm looking forward, amen, to be in Guyana sometime soon. So if you're in Guyana, we're hoping to be with you in the month of August. Amen. And we're going to get to spend some time in, in prayer, deliverance, miracle, healing, and just good fellowship. And so I want to thank you again for joining us. And we want to thank every single person who helps us. We want to ask you to continue to give to our building program, continue to give to our building project. Amen. As we get ready to do some renovation slash addition. And we want to ask you to continue to be praying for us as we continue to pray for you. This is Bishop Ola saying, love you all. Shalom. Coming straight from the heart Impact to impart We're giving all sinners a brand new start Impact to impart 
We're sending the message. 